If you ever open the science section of any newspaper, <laughs> what is it? 1993. Chances are you've come across at least a couple of headlines about scientists possibly discovering proof of aliens. Humanity's interest in extraterrestrial life goes back thousands of years, but despite all the seemingly promising leads so far, we found dick all. To this day, astrophysicists can't even say for sure that life beyond Earth exists. Still, most of them are really optimistic about it. They think we'll find life someday. The only question is, how? From examining the planets and moons in our solar system, to sending out radio waves and searching for biosignatures and traces of alien technology across the Milky Way, there are many methods that could finally help us succeed in our biggest, longest mission. We can't say for sure which of these approaches will turn out to be successful, but some certainly seem more promising and efficient than others. And if scientists can figure out what exactly we should be looking for, we might discover alien life sooner than you might think. Too many planets, too little time. When we think about aliens, we often imagine whole worlds and planets with technologically advanced civilizations. For decades now, scientists have been trying to reach any of those potential planets that could have life on them. But if they've been working so hard for so long, then how come they've found nothing? The issue is that we still know very little about our galaxy. Currently, we know of over 6,000 confirmed exoplanets in the Milky Way. That may seem like a large number, and to an extent, it is a large number. Discovering and confirming planets like this is a complicated process, and it's impressive that we already know of so many. However, the truth is that 6,000 is a very small percentage of how many planets there likely are in our galaxy. The estimate for the total number of exoplanets lies in the hundreds of billions. Examining each of those 6,000 planets we know of would take years and years. It's hard to imagine how much time we would need to search the entire galaxy. The good news is that we don't have to do a detailed examination of every single planet. Scientists have gotten pretty good at narrowing it all down. The only planets worth this kind of investigation are those in something called the habitable zone. As far as we understand it, for life to exist on a planet, it has to be a certain distance from a star that would allow for liquid water. Other than that, there are also certain requirements for the planet's atmosphere, size, and various other things. Now, these requirements actually make the scientist's job a whole lot easier. But even with this smaller number of planets, there's still the question of which method is best for actually learning about alien life. Radio signals Broadcasting radio signals is probably the most well-known and tried technique when it comes to searching for extraterrestrial life. Sending out messages or simply letting our own communication be heard by anyone potentially out there is a relatively straightforward way of reaching beyond Earth. However, it also comes with its controversies. What if we attract unwanted attention? And is this method truly worth it? We've been doing this for decades, and it seemingly hasn't done anything, so maybe there's a better way? One potential way of avoiding unwanted attention by shouting out into the universe was suggested by an astronomer from Penn State University, Nick Toussaint, who came up with a way that we could listen to aliens instead. They wouldn't be listening in on us, we'd be listening to them. The idea is pretty simple. Imagine that there are two alien planets that know about each other and communicate with each other via radio. In astronomy, there is something called oculation. This is what happens when one planet passes in front of another planet. The first planet can cover the other planet, but it doesn't always block it out completely. And that's where we would come in. If the aliens were communicating with each other via radio during occultation and the entire planet wasn't blocked out, the waves could wash over the planet and flow into space. At that point, Toussaint suggested that our radio telescopes could detect these messages and we could find confirmation of alien life. And this is an interesting proposal, and it shows that there is still progress and innovation to come in radio technology and alien detection. However, this isn't the only thing that we can look out for. Searching for biosignatures one of the biggest assets of current space missions is NASA's James Webb Space Telescope, or JWST. The telescope orbits around the Sun, which gives us a good view of deep space. While the JWST readings aren't always 100% accurate, 
the margin of error is really small, which makes it the perfect tool for transit spectroscopy. Spectroscopy is the study of the interaction between light and matter. When a planet passes in front of a star, it dims the star's light, and this is called a transit. During the transit, the light of the star goes through the planet's atmosphere, and this is what the JWST can pick up on. What this means is that through the telescope's readings, we can figure out what kind of gases are present in the planet's atmosphere. Different molecules absorb light at different levels, so simply put, there are signatures that allow scientists to determine if gases like sodium or methane are present. If we could locate a planet that has a similar atmosphere to Earth's, we could assume that life may be possible on said planet. For example, some gases in our atmosphere could be considered biosignatures. Biosignatures are elements that indicate that life is or was present, so discovering a planet with some of these biosignatures would be a massive step forward. We could find proof of alien life, whether it's still around or extinct. Recently, scientists actually found strong potential evidence of alien life using this method. K218b is a planet that's in the Leo constellation. It's about 124 light years from Earth. We've known about this planet for about 10 years, and we've known that it could potentially be habitable for a while. But now, it seems like we've made another major discovery. Astrophysicists from Cambridge reported potential traces of DMS in K218b's atmosphere. DMS, or dimethyl sulfide, is a chemical that, on Earth at least, is only produced by life such as marine phytoplankton. This discovery could be huge. If confirmed, it could be strong evidence that life could already exist on K218b. But not everyone's convinced by this. There's so much we don't know about the universe and how things work. Even if the readings were correct, the chemical could be produced in ways we simply don't know about yet. For example, DMS has also been discovered in a lifeless comet. Could it be that some comets brought the chemical to the planet instead? And then there's also the fact that the JWST can make mistakes. So while this new discovery is certainly promising, we're sadly still nowhere near being able to declare that life exists outside of Earth. Alien Pollution and Technosignatures Now, biosignatures aren't the only things that can indicate life. Some scientists believe that looking for technosignatures, or proof of past or present technology, could be a more productive way of looking for extraterrestrial life. Technosignatures could be harder to find, but if we were able to make such a discovery, it would likely mean a lot right away. It would not imply just the existence of life, it would imply the existence of intelligent life. One way to look for those signs of technology is to focus on possible pollution. This could be light pollution, large amounts of waste, or toxic gases. Gonzalo Gonzalez Bard from the Harvard Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics suggests looking for CFCs in particular. CFCs are what we use to release into the atmosphere through different appliances, such as fridges. The sheer amount of these gases is what ended up damaging the ozone layer, which is why we stopped producing them. However, even though we no longer put these toxic gases out, they are still out there. Unfortunately, CFCs can stay in the atmosphere for tens of thousands of years, which is not a good thing for us as far as our planet is concerned, but it could help us look for aliens. If another civilization went through similar discoveries, they might have, at some point, also produced a large amount of CFCs. Theoretically, our telescopes could pick up on this using spectroscopy, and that's how we could learn about intelligent life. There are other gases we could watch out for too, such as NO2, which on Earth mostly comes from industrial emissions. However, CFCs do seem like a safer bet. They last much longer, and as far as we know, there are no natural sources that produce them, which isn't the case for NO2. Either way, looking for signs of pollution could lead us to discovering alien life, but it's not the only kind of technology that we could be searching for. Alien Megastructures Alien megastructures are perhaps the most exciting method of searching for extraterrestrial life. Finding out that there is plankton on another planet would be one thing, but discovering that there are more advanced civilizations out there than our own, that would be something really, really different and cooler than plankton. There are studies and projects today that look at potential Dyson spheres. Dyson spheres are these theoretical solar structures that were proposed by Freeman Dyson that could harness energy from a star. These panels would be massive and would surround a star. Our technology can't produce anything like this, but Dyson suggested that another, more advanced civilization could build it. 
We don't currently know if there are Dyson spheres out there, obviously, but there are scientists who are looking for them. In June 2024, a study titled Project Hephaestos found seven potential Dyson sphere candidates. These seven stars all produce infrared glow that we can't explain. This is something that scientists assume Dyson spheres would do, so these stars are very much a fit for this prediction. However, that doesn't mean that all seven are definitely Dyson spheres. There's a really, really good chance that none of them are. There could be other natural explanations for the infrared glow. Chopping straight to Dyson spheres is just a bit silly and not something the scientists really do. Likely, they have a long research process ahead of them, which may or may not end up with them discovering alien life. Considering our solar system, While looking at exoplanets and searching the galaxy for signs of other civilizations is undoubtedly ambitious and exciting, there's also merit in staying closer to home. We know much more about the solar system than we do about the rest of the galaxy, but there's still a whole lot that we just don't know. Let's consider Mars for a second. Is there life on Mars is a question that has been asked countless times. By now, you might be under the assumption that there isn't life on Mars. However, we don't actually know that. While some of our previous promising discoveries, such as the 1975 Martian soil experiments, haven't given us any real proof of life, Mars isn't completely out of the question as a potential contender. For example, we know that billions of years ago, Mars was likely full of seas and lakes. Even today, there is a chance that water could be found under the planet's ice caps. NASA is currently working on collecting more samples from a dried-up Martian lake, which they're hoping to study by the 2030s. That being said, even if we do discover that life on Mars is or was possible, it won't necessarily prove that there could be alien life on other planets. Mars and Earth used to have some of the same material, which means that if life came about on both planets, it might have been due to this similarity. We'd still be none the wiser as far as the rest of the universe is concerned. Mars isn't the only place in the solar system that scientists are interested in, though. They're also looking at Jupiter's moon Europa and Saturn's Enceladus, as well as the planet Venus, which showed traces of weak phosphine gas signals. On Earth, phosphine gas is produced in the digestive tract of animals, among other things. It's considered a biosignature. Could this mean that Venus might have life on it? It's possible. We just can't be sure yet, especially due to how weak the signals were. What's more, there is always the possibility that we don't know everything about how such gases come to be. And there's another thing astrobiologists aren't sure of. What actually is life? What's the difference between life and something that's not life? Life as we don't know it. Now, life as we don't know it is a philosophical proposition that poses potential problems to astronomers everywhere. We're looking for alien life, but do we even know what we're really looking for? Our understanding of life comes from the life that we already know. There's DNA, RNA, and other nucleic acids. But what if aliens just aren't made like that? What if there's life that we simply don't understand or can't conceive of? Scientists are constantly being surprised by new discoveries. It is now the question that there is life that could just completely escape us. We're looking for biosignatures, technosignatures, we're sending out radio waves. But that may not be of any use if extraterrestrial life differs greatly from our expectations. So how do we solve this problem? Well, we might not be able to. The only thing we can do is be open-minded and expect the unexpected. The universe has its way of surprising us, and we should try to keep that in mind. Could aliens be looking for us? There's one last theory that we ought to consider. Maybe the way we'll learn about aliens won't be through us finding them, but through them finding us. If there is another civilization out there, who's to say they aren't trying to look for others too? They could even be using the same methods as us. In 2021, it was discovered that about 2,000 stars within 300 light years of Earth could see our planet transit the Sun. With a similar telescope to our JWST, another civilization could spot our planet. Similarly, there are certain biosignatures that could give us away, such as water vapor, oxygen, and nitrogen. And of course, we also have different technosignatures out there, including CFCs. If any potential aliens out there have our technology on a bigger scale, or if they simply get luckier, they could learn about us before we learn about them. There's also the possibility that they might have already found us. Some believe that we could even find traces of extraterrestrial life here on Earth itself. That would be very much out of a sci-fi film, though, and make all the conspiracy people very happy. 
So with all these methods of looking for alien life, one question does come to mind. Why haven't we found anything yet? Does alien life even exist? Well, we can't know for sure. Most scientists believe that there is life out there. A 2024 survey showed that 86.6% of astrobiologists either agreed or strongly agreed that it is likely that some kind of extraterrestrial life exists in the universe. What's more, 67.4% of astrobiologists also agreed that there may even be intelligent alien life out there. And if the experts believe it, why shouldn't we? Often, it is the scientist's job to doubt anything and everything. If they're so optimistic, Perhaps we will make a huge discovery like this at some point in the future. Who knows, it could even be sooner than we think. Lord Martin Rees, an astronomer from the UK, suggested that in 10 years we may have some kind of evidence about life on nearby planets. And since we're supposed to expect the unexpected, maybe it'll happen even sooner. Thank you for watching.